Hello, we are going to be doing 6.1 notes today on dilations and scale factors. So our objectives, students will be able to classify dilations and enlargements or reductions and able to find the scale factor or dilation. All right, so our first exploration is a GeoGebra exploration and we're going to make the scale factor two, the scale factor one half and what we kind of notice about these things and what we can come up with, what our conjecture is. All right, so if you go to the GeoGebra activity, we end up in this spot here. I want you all to click the image button. So we're currently on the scale factor of one. Let's go ahead and start with the go to scale factor of two. So I'm going to take a look at it, see if you notice anything. I'll give you guys a second to come up with something on your own. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna take a look from A to B. So from A to B, I notice there are three spots and from A prime to B prime, there are one, two, three, four, five, six spots. So what that might tell me is that, oh, well, our new image or our image is twice the size of our pre-image. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at it when it's one half. So point four. Five. All right, let's take a look from A to B again. So my red, my red triangle, my pre-image did not change. It's still only the three points. And then A, B is one and a half, or at least that looks like half. I'm gonna change this to four. We'll kind of check that out. So one, two, three, four, and my blue is definitely two. So when A was at the three, A prime to B prime was definitely 1.5 which is one half of AB. All right, I'm gonna go and change this back to one, one more time. And so if we notice, my blue triangle is now exactly on top of my red triangle. So what that might tell me is that my image is now the exact same as my pre-image. Couple other things to remember, let's go back to two. Our image has the they look like little apostrophes, so this would be A prime, B prime. So that's our image, and our pre-image does not have any of that. So our pre-image does not have the little apostrophes, the prime marks, our image does. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the notes. So a conjecture we might come up with is that the scale factor decides if the dilation is smaller or larger, and by exactly how much. All right, so dilation, centered at the origin. So that part's super important. I'm actually gonna go back to the um, GeoGebra real quick. So if you see, there is this thing that you can move around the center, but as you can see, when you move around the center, my, my dilation moves. So right now we are only dealing with when we are at the center, um, so zero, zero at the origin. We aren't worrying about when the center moves at the moment. Okay. So if a figure is dilated, then the image has the same degrees as the pre-image, but the sides can be different. So something we might see, we have an equilateral triangle. All of my angles are 60 degrees, right, in our equilateral triangle. But in this triangle, we might have a 4, and in my smaller triangle, I might have a 2. So the angles stay the same, or the angles stay the same, but the sides will most likely end up changing. All right, now scale factor of a dilation. So scale factor is denoted with K. So the scale factor of a dilation is a ratio, or we can say fraction, that is the multiplier for the size of the pre-image to get the lengths of the size of the image. We use K for that scale factor. All right, so scale factor, to find that, we have the image over the pre-image. Um, so if this was, we'll make this A prime and A. So our image would be four and our pre-image would be two. So using this example there which we can reduce that down to two. So then my scale factor would be K, or would be two. K equals two. All right, now to decide reduction or enlargement. So a reduction should be somewhere between zero and one. So less than one 
but greater than zero. And enlargement, k is greater than one. So whenever we're looking at those numbers, trying to figure out, well, is this a reduction or an enlargement? You have to take, you can take a look at your scale factor and figure out, okay, this is one or the other. So let's go ahead and try example one and two. So it's question one says, uh, is this dilation a reduction or an enlargement? So I'm gonna start with finding which one has the prime marks. So my green triangle does, which means this is my image and this is my pre-image. So I need to decide, is my image larger or smaller? Since it is larger, this one is enlargement. Sorry, I didn't write it all the way. Large, next, there we go. So this is enlargement because the pre-image is smaller than the image. The image is bigger. All right, and then question two, we want to find the scale factor of the dilation. So remember, it is image all over pre-image. And I'm going to pick one side of my triangle, and it has to be the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and pick PR. I like picking the sides that are either, either directly up and down or directly side to side. If you pick a slant line, then you're going to have to um, find the length of that. Um, sometimes you have to do that, but in some cases, like this one, we don't have to do that. We have a line straight up and down, so I can easily count. So, for my pre-image, it's 2, and for my image, I have 6. So, my image is 6, and my pre-image is 2. So, now my scale factor is 3. Alright, I want you guys to go ahead and try example 3 and 4. Four. I'll give you a second, pause the video, try those problems. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at those. So, we decided it was an enlargement, so I was looking at where my primes were, so which one was my image. So, image and pre-image. So, my image is bigger, so it's an enlargement. And then I counted from A to D was 9. And from A to D here is 3. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at example 5. So, multiple choice. Which statement below is true for the dilation shown below? Alright, so I notice my prime marks are on my smaller item. Since the prime marks are on the smaller, this one is definitely a reduction. So, it can't be A or B. Alright, now let's think about the scale factor. So, let's use what we have in. So, image all over pre-image. So, my image is 1, 2, 3, 4. And my pre-image, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, that can be reduced down to 1 half. So, the scale factor K is 1 half. And that makes sense too, right? Because a reduction should be less than 1. So even if I didn't see this, if they told me it was a reduction, it was either 2 or 1 half, I would say 1 half, because a reduction has to be, the scale factor has to be smaller than 1. Alright, go ahead and try number 6. It's a multiple choice. We want to fi figure out which K is a, is a reduction. Which scale factor is a reduction. Think about what we just talked about. Reduction has to be less than 1. All right, let's go and take a look at six. So a good key to look at would be a fraction. But if we look at B, we have seven over six, which is one and one six. So that is actually greater than one. So therefore, B could not be the option. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at seven and eight. And then you guys can try nine and 10. So triangle ABC is dilated. Given the lengths below, find the scale factor also classify each dilation as a reduction or an enlargement. So if I have um, A, B, and then, or A prime, B prime, and then A, B, our image is the one with the prime. So I'm going to do 32 divided by 8. That gives me 4. So my K, my scale factor, is 4, which is greater than 1, so it has to be an enlargement. All right. Number 8, B prime, C prime, that's my image, so I have 9 
divided by 24, which is my pre-image. That could be simplified to 3 over 8. So since my k value is less than 1, we have a reduction. All right, go ahead and try 9 and 10. I'll give you a second to pause the video, try them out, and I'll show you the answers. There is 9 and 10. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at exploration number two. So use the following link to explore the coordinates of a dilation centered at the origin. We want to click on the slider and get the scale factor to two, compare the coordinates, and then click on the slider and get the scale factor to one half. What did you notice there? All right, so let's go ahead and make their scale factor two. So we've already discussed the side lengths are definitely twice the size. But let's go ahead and take a look at our coordinate points. So from A to A prime, C to C prime, and B to B prime. So we're going to take a look at those. B is 2, 2. B prime is 4, 4. C is 1, 4. C prime is 2, 8. And then A is negative 2, 3. Then we have negative 4, 6. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at when the scale factor is one half. If I can get this one half, there we go. All right, our C is one and four. We have 1.5 and six. And then, oh, that's 1.5, not one half. That looks a little odd. Let's go ahead and fix that. All right, it's beautiful. All right. Now we have 1 and 4, so we have 0.5 and 2, B is 2 and 2, B prime is 1 and 1, A is negative 2, 3, A prime is negative 1 and 1.5. So a couple things I noticed is that when it was at the scale factor of 2, all of my coordinate points were twice the size. So not only are my side lengths twice the size, but my coordinates are going to be in this spot two times of their location. So if we think about C, C is 1 and 4, C prime is 2 and 8. So if I multiply by the scale factor of 2, 1 times 2 is 2, 4 times 2 is 8. All right, let's go ahead and go back to our notes. So coordinates of a dilation centered at the origin. For any dilation centered at the origin, the coordinates of the image can be found by multiplying the coordinates of the pre-image by the scale factor. So not only are the sides doubled or cut in half, um, so are the coordinates. All right, so 11 and 12, and then as well as 13 and 14, we're all using the same A, B, and C, and but they just all have different scale factors. So I'm gonna rewrite so I have it all here in front of me. So A is negative 6, 4. B, we have 3, negative 2. C, I have negative 1, 0. My scale factor is 2, so I'm going to multiply all of these by 2. And I'm not just going to multiply the Y or just the X. I'm going to multiply both the Y and the X. So that means my A prime is now negative 12, comma 8. My B prime would be 6, comma, negative 4. And then my C prime, we have negative 2, comma, 0. So 0 times 2 is still 0. So that one does stay the same. All right, so I multiplied all of my values by 2 to get to where I am now. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at 12. So we're starting with the same coordinate points. So A, B, and C, but this time my scale factor is one third, so that means I'm gonna multiply all of my values by one third. So I have A prime, so let's see, uh, if we do negative six times one third, remember that is pretty much just division, so I have negative six divided by three which is negative two. 
And then there are going to be times where you can't reduce all the way, and you can just leave it as a fraction, so 4 thirds. All right, and then we have B prime. So 3 times 1 third will give me 1. Negative 2 times 1 third will give me negative 2 over 3. All right, and then C prime, once again, I have, oh, I just realized I wrote 3, negative 2, 2 times 1. This should be negative 1, 0. So that gives me negative 1 third, comma, 0. There are my, there's my image when my scale factor was 1 third. And all these coordinate points are definitely a lot smaller than um, our pre-image points, so that makes sense when I have a reduction going on. All right, go ahead and try 13 and 14. There are your scale factors. Go ahead and pause the video, then I'll show you the solution. All right, here we have we have our pre-image, and then I have highlighted the answers with the image. All right, and that's the end of 6.1. If you have any more questions, please be sure to ask the teacher. We watch the video as needed. And have a wonderful rest of your day.